Um, kind of a mixed, mixed results uh, this week. Uh, you know, the, the gauntlet of strength of schedule continued. Uh, we are at number 11 Ohio State Thursday in a 2-2 draw. Uh, found a way to take the lead, um, but gave it back uh, late in the game. And then kind of replicated again on Sunday. We were playing league leading Rutgers, um, who was the only uh, purely un undefeated team in the conference. Going into the game at 4-0, uh, you know, broke them down consistently, probably missed a couple goal scoring chances we should have until capitalizing on a great goal on, uh, I think, 81st minute, so pretty late. Uh, but weren't able to hold on to the match, uh, conceding a PK uh, late in it. So a little bit... Disappointing, obviously, in the end to, to be able to con concede goals like that. Um, our savior draw was very similar on a handball uh, PK. That was that both were definitely handballs in the box. Uh, but we got to be more disciplined in our defending in those moments and and see games out because obviously three points, especially in the Big Ten, are super hard to come by. And as you look at the standings now, effectively halfway through, we play eleven Big Ten matches. We're we're five games through it now. Uh, you got a, a jumbled group at the top. Uh, and only 10 teams make, 10 of the 18 make the Big Ten tournament uh, later in October. So those points really matter. Uh, a little disappointing to give those away. Uh, but in the end, it, I mean, very good opponents on the course of the week for sure. Jeff, uh, rankings, the pros and cons of rankings. Uh, the pros are that your, your team can feel the recognition, um, the respect that others may have of, of your program and what you've accomplished at that time period uh, or to that time period in your season. Um, I think it could build some additional confidence to know that you can do it, um, that you're being recognized for it. Um, I think it can generate buzz uh, for, for programs and for games, uh, for sure. Uh, you can draw fans to games maybe differently. Uh, I'm probably missing some additional pros. Uh, the other side to that is you know when you're ranked that can be an additional extrinsic motivator for your opponent maybe grab their attention a little bit differently uh, it can um, maybe give you a self uh, false sense of security you know the poll you're, that every team should be chasing is the the last poll of the year and that's the one that matters the most because that's a reflection of your entire season so you know last week being the number one team ranked in the country uh, it's great to have that recognition uh, for our program, but at the same time, like I think, if anything, it can only give additional yeah. focus in our opponents, uh, more desire extrinsically to go get a result. And obviously, if they do, you know, um, look, three years ago, if you had said, you know, I mean, Rutgers social media wouldn't be blowing up uh, with a one-one draw at Michigan State a few years ago, and I think that also shows the growth of our program. So um, there's pros and cons to it. Um, yeah, that'd be. That'd be my best answer for it. Jeff, how often have you had a goalkeeper score a goal <laughs> and what Caitlin did? How rare is that? Only once. So I've been a college head coach uh, for 19 years, and that's the only time I've had a goalkeeper score a goal in the run of play. Um, look, I really, I really encourage my players to advocate for themselves. And KP has been in great form this season. Uh, she was actually a forward for her high school team uh, growing up, so she's got elite foot skills. Uh, so she scored a lot of goals, both in run and play and from the penalty kick spot in her, her youth career. Um, and she's been advocating for that for a few weeks now. We were one of three to that point in the season, so not, not a, a great um, uh, you know, rate uh, to be converting at. So she really been advocating for herself. Uh, we had total confidence in her, uh, and, and obviously she absolutely drilled that. Uh, just unfortunate, it, it didn't end up being the game winner. Do you chart that at practice? Do you have people try it and keep track of who's been more successful? We do. Um, we track it both in their, their past history, but also you know in training. We tend to do more of it in October and into November because you have the possibility of going to a shootout um, in postseason play. Uh, but we do it through the, the course of the season as well, um, whether that's getting additional reps at the end of training or before it, or we'll randomly call a penalty kick. Um, you know, my players love me being the referee because I make erratic random phone or random fouls um, and have to see how they respond to it. So, um, but she's, you know, she's pretty money from that spot and, and hit that really well. With Michigan up next, do you have any early memories of the rivalry, whether it's soccer or other sports you've grown up? Oh man, um, 
I mean, I've grown up right here in East Lansing as a Spartan fan, so, you know, you name the sport, uh, I can remember a lot of them. Uh, you know, I mean, I vividly remember the um, TJ Duckett uh, touchdown uh, game. Uh, I was in, in college myself, and, and our bus actually caught on fire driving to a game uh, right off Trowbridge Road. Everybody was safe. Uh, that was all good, but we all came back to the Hostler house and watched that game. Uh, so I have some pretty vivid memories of, of that uh, time period. Um, you know, I, I mean, I remember men's basketball, you know, winning by 40 points. Uh, I remember them clinching a Big Ten championship uh, against Michigan. Uh, and then on the soccer side of things, you know, on the men's side, a lot of the, the you know, the Bear uh, games and that rivalry uh, being close matches. Uh, I had the, the privilege of coaching Dewan Jones during his youth club career. Uh, and so followed those four years very, very closely. Um, and he obviously played a, a key role in that, especially later in his career. And then for us, I mean, our games, uh, our first one, I remember clear as day at Michigan. I think that Michigan team in 2021 is one of the best college soccer teams I've, I've coached against. Um, and we did a great job to hang in the game. We conceded late. Ava Cook almost scored in the, in the 86th minute to equalize against the top 10 game on the road. Uh, and most vividly, all, all three of our games we've played, um, Michigan, whether it's there or here, um, have set attendance records. So uh, Michigan in 21, uh, here in 22, back at Michigan last year, they sold out uh, our game at Ann Ann Arbor last year, uh, a full week in advance. So uh, great crowds, great atmospheres, great games. Uh, we've obviously been on the better side of it the last two times. Um, but we're gonna have to be you know, able to execute and perform much better uh, to get it again on Saturday. Uh, don't know the exact uh, mechanics to, to what happened, but effectively something fell out of the back of the bus where the engine was, sparked, there was a gas leak, immediately caught on fire. Um, so I still have that picture in my office. It looks like it's you know, CGI or something animated, uh, but it's, it's a real picture. The news, um, you guys know how traffic is on 127 on a football game day, especially Michigan, Michigan State. The northbound 127 was a parking lot, and there was actually some local media that took that picture. Uh, they got out of the car and had their cameras rolling. So, bus driver handed me a little fire extinguisher about this big and said, go get it, Jeff. I said, you're crazy. So we lost all of our CDs, you know, our big CD books that day. Anyone else? All right, thank you. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs>